So, so what'd you do with your diet? Were you just pounding calories? I mean, just eating everything in sight? Yeah. So I approached my diet a little bit differently than most you might expect for marathons. I did a low carb diet. Well, what would be a low carb for this kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So I was using this in all my training and all my pacing and all my eating. I did this thing called the Maffetone method. And it's basically this guy, Phil Maffetone, figured that you should do all your training at an aerobic level. So he figured out this through experience. He calculated your – he came up with an equation to calculate your maximum aerobic heart rate. It was 180 minus your age. And then there's other little uh, adjustments you can make to that. So my Maffetone heart rate was 149. And so I ca- I'd never ran anything over 149. So you you on a heart rate monitor all the time? Yeah, I had a, a TomTom watch. Uh, and I had one and then my wife has one. So I had two on when I was running my marathon just in case one messed up. And so I ran all my, all my training and all my marathons were run at as close to that 149 heart rate. And what it does is trains, instead of like making you strong, your muscles stronger, it actually trains your cardiovascular efficiency. So when you start out, you'll be running at 149 heart rate and you'll be pretty slow. But as you do that more, your heart and lungs will become more and more efficient. So eventually, you'll be running at that same 149 heart rate, but you'll be running twice as fast because right. you're becoming more efficient. So I just approached it like that, or I, 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 I kind of figured it'd be better to do it that way because the more glycolysis and the more carbohydrates you use, the more your body's going to have to – they're more destructive uh, to your body. So I'm like, well, in order to be able to run these, I have to run them at a maintainable pace and in a, in a maintainable way. I can't just go out and run as fast as I can every single one. I had to pace it. And so I figured that's how I was going to pace it, uh, keeping my heart rate under 150, not using those carbs. And so that also allowed me to be able to eat just really high fat. Um, I think I had between 150 and 175 grams of carbs a day. And that's what I limited it to. And then I would eat, uh, during the run, I would eat three bonk breaker bars, one at each of my breaks. And they're just like these little energy bars. And that would keep me going. That would be my kind of a lot of carbs there. So that would kind of keep me going during the run. I would just drink water whenever I got thirsty. And then after I ran, we had pre-made these, pre-made all my meals and we just made this super calorie dense cheese and meat sauce that we froze. <laughs> we put it all in the freezer and it was just the densest, you know, the calorie densest stuff you could probably like, you know, con- whole containers and cream and cheese and all this stuff. So <laughs> super dense. And my mom would heat up uh, a bowl of that for me. And I would take a bag of pork rinds and put that in the chili and mix that in there and Gets eat the off. whole thing. And before, a lot of the times before I, before I even ran, I would eat another bag of pork cracklings. So I'd have two bags of pork rinds, this big-ass bowl of meat sauce and cheese sauce. And then I would eat uh, some sweet potato chips, things like that. If somebody brought us donuts, I'd have a donut, you know, um, <laughs> we have issues with that violation. <laughs> Pork yeah. rinds, good. Donuts, no. If people, if people could see what just happened to Jocko's eyes when I say I didn't donut, <laughs> thought he was going to come across. Um, so I'd eat that, and then at the, for dinner I'd eat uh, eggs and bacon. 